Hey y'all, hope you're doing good today. So in today's message, I want to start um, thinking about Halloween themed messages. So this was not actually my intention when I started out with my inspiration and my notes, but it just morphed into that. So I'm gonna go with it and I hope that you enjoy it. So, you know, when we think about concepts like the darkness or evil through the lens of spirituality, and we are looking to represent this, this concept in an archetypal uh, logo or, or symbol or personification, like in a character, if it's in a movie or a book or whatever, right? When we're looking to represent what evil means, a lot of times you find this common theme of of reptiles, essentially. You know, the serpent, for example, is mentioned in, in the Christian Bible. And so, it's just a very strong theme, even throughout other belief systems and things like that. And then what's interesting, and I'm, I'm just recalling, this is where I had this flood coming in, you know, when I'm trying to share a message with you all. It's like something else is trying to say, hey, don't forget about this, and this, and this, and this. And, and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, but I've already got, I I'm, I'm, need to stay on track because I have this plan, you know, with my message. But when you're in the flow, it's, I think that's when sometimes it comes out all broken <laughs> and in bits and pieces, but I'm going to share whatever comes to me and what feels right. So again, I hope you enjoy it. But yes, this whole theme of, of reptiles representing the darkness or the, the shadow side of life. Um, evil, however you want to label or phrase this concept, right? Um, I'm going to put a spin on this today, and that is looking at, instead of snakes and serpents and, and, and your larger reptiles, even like dragons, and which have good symbolism in other cultures, ironically, um, instead of this, we're going to be looking at spiders. And this is why I realized this is very fitting because of the time of year, because we're almost in October and therefore Halloween. So I just hope you enjoy it. And then I recalled that I have this, this little fun um, little spider ring here. I've had it for many, many years. I don't even know why I've kept this, but he's just kind of cute. So I thought I'm gonna wear that today. So <laughs> but, ironically, I'm not one to, get much into the blood and gore side of things when it comes to scary movies and things like that or even haunted houses. Um, I really never have been into that type of, of Halloween stuff, but I do enjoy the mysterious and magical side of things, right? So, um, but yes, spiders are, man, you could, you could spend probably weeks um, researching this as far as the symbolism and the role of spiders throughout different cultures when it comes to their their folklore and their fairy tales that teach lessons and where they're representing you know certain aspects of humanity you could just spend weeks on this and so but I'm just gonna be touching on it as part of the message so let me I just wanted to open with that. We're going to get into talking about spiders in just a little bit. It'll be a big part of our message. But I'm going to share with you my thought process. And this is where <clears throat> I've shared this before with y'all, but I want to take this moment, this opportunity to do this again. So there's tons of YouTube channels out there that are already very structured. They're already more, gosh, how do I want to put this? streamlined and bullet point and professional <laughs> and all this and they're great they're great and that's fine and good but as far as what resonates with me when I'm looking for something to watch I just prefer the the energy put forth in in the message to be one that's more realistic and casual and like sitting down and chatting with a friend. So that's why I present what I do in the manner that I do on my channel. And I would love to hear your thoughts on that. If it's too scattered, if it if it needs to be more streamlined for better comprehension or, or whatever it is, um, 
and I'm not saying that in a way like you have issues with con comprehension. I'm saying like, am I doing a, a poor job of it being scattered? Because I know, <laughs> I know that I hit on all these random points, you know, throughout my messages. But in the end, hopefully you'll find that they tie together. And the reason I do that is because, again, as far as what appeals to me, what resonates with me, has been has been presented things that are presented to me in that manner too it's kind of like going on a journey together it's sort of like instead of you know keeping all of this process of how things come to me private and then whittling it down to these specific points and sharing that in a very rigid manner and I do think there's value in that but instead of doing that I also think there's value in going through this process of of building a concept together because what happens when you're when you're constructing this this concept this theory this um, mental structure this paradigm whatever you want to call it as you're building that it is a process and there may be points that come up for me it's almost like you're you're creating this opportunity as you're doing your part and building a concept it's sort of like creating an opportunity through the process for the numinous the higher power to interject and plant these seeds along the way and they come across through our conscious awareness it's like these aha moments like these revelations and they're fun it's fun to do and so that's why I want to share this process with you so that, you know, it is slow, but as we go through it, you may have these very unique revelations that happen for you that I don't even mention. But just going along through this process, you, that, it may produce that for you. And so that's what I have found as I watch these other channels or even like reading certain books. Those are my favorite. Um, things that get my wheels turning, you know, and so it's 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 kind of fun too because I'll I'll be really you know focused on like as an example of a movie or a video presentation whatever I'll be super focused in on it and then something is said or presented that that really just gets my wheels turning <laughs> in my mind and and I just kind of go way off and, and I have these revelations and I realize I've missed the last five minutes and I'll have to pause it and back it up so that I don't miss that but the point is it's just um, that's a very rich and enriching experience you know what I mean and so you wind up walking away feeling gifted with having had this opportunity for revelations and so um, I had not planned on sharing all that, <laughs> but <laughs> it just came to me. But, um, and so I think there's a time and place for everything you might say. And, and so again, there is a time and place for those other presentations that are more streamlined. Um, but I still want your opinion on, you know, any improvements I can make on my channel. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm clearly not doing this to reach, you know, the masses because, my journey is ever first of all everybody's journey is unique truly but you know my most recent exp life experiences have i feel like where i am today it's just a, a kind of a little bit of a less common place because of the things i've been through trying to figure out how I can say that and so I think there's you know not as many people that can relate to being in this stage of life having gone through certain things very challenging things but for those of us who have and for those of us who who get it and who can resonate with one another I think it's just it's for me um, it's it's priceless it's priceless and so I just hope to offer that to you in my own way so um, yeah so let me start by sharing how my thoughts <laughs> um, went in my note-taking 
So, you know, when we have dreams, a lot of times dreams are constructed of just random elements. I mean, just, you know, you can wake up and if you're fortunate enough to remember many details in your dream, it's sort of like you can deconstruct it. You can sort of just sit there and, um, and, and just look at each piece of it and try to figure out like, where in the world did that come from? Why, why in the world did I dream about this giant creature? You know, I haven't seen any movies like that, or I haven't read any books like that, or nobody's mentioned that, or, you know, why did I, a common thing that I used to dream about was, um, underground, uh, like, tunnel systems and, and um, mazes and things like that and they were just really different like a whole different world that I would have to figure out and navigate <laughs> and it was a little bit scary kind of the, a scary environment but yet I wasn't scared so um, it was just a challenge for me I've, I've had a lot of dreams of um, physical challenges sort of like obstacle courses I don't know why um, but those are very intriguing to me but when we have dreams a lot of the archetypal um, symbolism that are that make up our dreams you know they they kind of remain a mystery and we can have fun trying to figure out what they mean and all this but yet that's not what I want to focus on what I want to focus on is a lot of things that we dream about we can trace back to um, oh yeah, I was thinking about that yesterday. You know, maybe you had a memory pop up the day before that you just sat with and dwelled on for some time. Got a fly in here. And so, because you sat there and dwelled on it for so long the day before, you know, or that day, then that night you dreamt about something to do with that memory. You know what I mean? So, um, we're going to talk about how these things that are real and actual in our life act as seeds <laughs> to create the dreams that we have, right? Um, and even the thoughts that we have. And so a big theme in this message, message is going to be about influence. But um, yeah, so, you know, again, we, we wake up, we try to decipher what's going on. Um, you know, did this come from a movie I watched? Did this come from, you know, a conversation I had or whatever? So let me share this with you all, okay? When we're trying to figure out, like, what does this mean? Um, this is a little poem from, based on my search online, uh, William Wordsworth. And it says, your mind is a garden. Your thoughts are the seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow weeds or something like that. I think there's variations of it. So, um... Again, talking about seeds, this is saying that our mind is the garden and our thoughts are the seeds, okay? But, as I like to, I question everything. So, I was like, I don't know. Are thoughts really the seeds? I, I don't know that that's um, totally untrue. I think there just may be more to this process. So, I looked up the word thought online. So per Oxford languages, the definition of thought is an idea or opinion produced by thinking or occurring suddenly in the mind. So you have a thought produced because you're consciously putting forth this effort, you're thinking, and then this is like a, it tabulates and pops up this thought. That's your result. That's your product, your, what, your item <laughs> you, you walk away with. But then again, Sometimes you're not thinking. You're not. You're just living. You're just sitting. You're whatever. Or at least you're not consciously thinking. And, and suddenly this random thought pops into your mind. Sort of like the, the symbolism in your dreams. It's like sometimes you can't trace back where, where did this come from. But it came from somewhere. That's the thing, right? This is where we get into the concepts of the psyche. The human psyche having different levels of consciousness, right? So I loved that. <laughs> or occurring suddenly in the mind. So the question becomes this. This is where my mind went. Do thoughts which are produced or made, um, do they have seeds? Right? Do they have seeds? So um, I personally think that they do because it's sort of like 
there ha when you're thinking, there has to be some ingredients and steps that go into the process of thinking. You have to have something to, to chew on to begin with. You see what I'm saying? Um, as an analogy with eating, but um, yeah. So if thoughts are a product of thinking, again, we may have conscious thinking and subconscious thinking. We may think, where'd that come from? whether in a dream or just a thought that pops up and, and we're like, we weren't thinking about that. Where'd that come from? That's where you get the idea of, you know, your, your mind being like a, a receptor, like a, like a radio, you know, that, that has an antenna or whatever. But, um, going with the theme of the subconscious. Okay. I looked up the etymology of the word sub and it means under or beneath or behind or below. And so also, it's from the Proto-Indo-European word up, up, and then you just have the S in front of it. Sometimes I think it was sup, which is interesting. Um, so because you're thinking about like supper, to sup, I think in the Bible, one of the verses is talking about to sup with one another, which is to eat, to consume, um, and you can do the same thing with your mind. So... Um, but this is from a variant form of the root um, UPO, meaning under, under. So I'm like, huh, up is under. <laughs> hmm, it's kind of a paradox there. It's kind of interesting, up is under. Um, and then also sub, going back to the, ori the original word we were looking at, right, sub, it can also indicate division into parts or sections. So this is where we get the psychological um, approach, like treatment um, in, within the field of psychology of the family systems, what they call the family systems, which is where you're breaking down um, your yourself, your mind, your feelings and everything into different parts and pieces to analyze each one and figure out the functions of each part of you. So that's called the family systems approach. Um, when you're talking about parts or sections, right? Sub. And then also it would play into archetypal personification within symbolism, you know, and within your dreams, within um, random thoughts even, or um, the symbolism that's very heavy in movies and, and story, any kind of stories, books, fairy tales, all this stuff. Um, a lot of times um, concepts are in fact personified or placed into a cartoon character or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? And then um, this is related, I feel like, to also to religions, um, specifically like... Uh, the Trinity, you know, having different uh, multiple parts that make up one. Um, so again, sub meaning division into parts or sections. And so you're thinking about your subconscious. Okay. And this is the reason we're doing this. Let me just go ahead and say this. The reason we're doing this is pretty much the theme of my channel, which is to, to try and do our part to, to live in a manner that we are more protected than maybe we had been in the past so that hopefully we won't be manipulated taken advantage of exploited or, or um, we can leave a situation quicker if we determine or discern that it's a little shady or even dangerous right so this is all about your armor this is all about protecting yourself in just a myriad of ways okay that's the motivation so again the theme of influence um, and persuasion and, and our mind picking up seeds even in the subconscious. So let's take a look at the word, the etymology of the word subject, right? To be subject to or a subject. So this is from the 14th century um, subject or subget, S-U-B-G-E-T, meaning person under control or dominion of another, right? To be the subject person under control or dominion of another. And it's said especially related to allegiance. So um, I feel like that's a conscious thing, you know, and that's that's hard. This is where we know that wolves and sheep's clothing, which is discussed in the Bible, um, and we are very much warned about, but um, if they can establish 
a, a role in your life with a label such as friend or spouse or whatever, if they can exploit their position in your family, like if they're a cousin or a sibling or whatever, and they just, they just exploit that, whatever label they're using, a lot of times there's like this automatic subconscious allegiance that we, that we feel bound to this person by, um, regardless of their character. It's sort of like we just kind of go to sleep and we don't pay attention so much. Um, and we tolerate more than we really should in, in a situation like this. And again, this is not about judgment. It's about protection. So, um, interesting. And then this is from the Latin, uh, subiectus, subiectus, meaning lying, lying under, below, near, or bordering on. Okay, which brings us to the word suggest. I was looking at SU and all these words suggest from the 1520s to place before another's mind, right? To, to have something suggested to your mind, planting seeds. So to place before another's mind, put forward a proposition. Um, this is from the Latin suggestus, meaning bring up, bring under, lay beneath, Furnish, afford, supply, or prompt, <clears throat> excuse me, prompt. Um, suggestion, mid-14th century, the action of prompting or urging. So this is kind of like getting into the quality of, of being pressured, feeling pressure from someone, okay? Being subjected to that and therefore becoming their subject. So um, what's interesting is this really got me. The term suggestion is is pretty much a neutral term, wouldn't you say? I would. It's kind of like um, if you're with a friend, they might be like, if you're explaining a situation, you got to make a decision or something like that, they might be like, well, hey, I got a suggestion. And you're like, okay. It's kind of neutral. You know, it might be a bad suggestion or a good one or whatever, but hopefully if it's a friend, if they're a true friend, it's going to be at least <laughs> um, founded on integrity. <laughs> and wanting the best for you. But anyway, in general, suggestion is a neutral term. We know this. But it said that um, originally this word suggestion was related to a prompting to evil. A prompting to evil from the Anglo-French and Old French suggestion, meaning hint or temptation. Temptation. And that just really clicked with me because I'm thinking, okay, so the Bible, the Christian Bible is full of verses warning us about being tempted and temptation. But I feel like the way we perceive that concept of being tempted is one way. And the way we perceive the intention behind the word suggestion is another. I don't think we would, I wouldn't anyway, normally correlate the two, right? But it's just, it's a... A subtlety that that can help us to be more discerning when we're paying attention to things in our life okay and I feel like so in other words this word suggestion went from being associated with something evil something bad bad intentions to something neutral you see what I'm saying so um it's like you know when you come out of a bad situation maybe you were in it for a long time you might be asking yourself, like, why in the world did I tolerate all that and normalize it? It's like we normalize it, but we don't realize we're doing it, and we wind up tolerating um, just all this stuff that we shouldn't, like being pressured, you know, and, and, and um, coerced to be okay with things that, you know, we're really not. And, and so it's like it, it messes with your mind, and your mind stops registering things instinctually. And so these people get away with a lot when, you know, if you had remained healthy and your mind had been protected throughout the whole process, you would have stood your ground, you know, and said, hang on, that's, that's, you know, I need a minute or let me take, let me sleep on this, think about it, you know, or, or you just, and then when you go take a minute and think about it, you're like, I don't, this don't make sense. There's something, there's something I'm not being told, or there's something that's not true here, or there's something up, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and manipulative people, they do, they pressure you because they don't want you to take the time to think. So it's like a, um, 
it's just a, a technique of coercion, really. So, yeah, I know for me, after going through this exercise today and making these notes, I'll never hear the word suggestion or even somebody saying something like, hey, can I make a suggestion or can I, may I, may I suggest something? Um, it's like, I'm gonna be like, no. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter how you package up uh, something like that, you know, to sound polite, like it's well intended, I'm gonna be on alert. <laughs> you know, which is good, it's good, you know, to be, pay, be paying attention. So, um, going back to suggestion being related to um, hint or temptation, then looking at temptation, you have tempt, which is um, from the root temp, meaning to stretch. And this plays a part in how these people get things um, over on us too, because it's kind of like the truth is stretched. And so when, when things are presented to you and you're pressured to respond, or even if you're not, when things are presented to you, but it's like, there's a part of you that's going, I'll tell, I'll tell you how it was for me. I, I just viewed all these interactions with, you know, this particular person I'm thinking of, but there's been several really in my life, not a lot, but the interactions have, were different than when anybody else, all my other friends, family, whatever. It's like, it's just, everything was kind of easy and just flowed. There was nothing that gave me reason for pause with other people, but with this person, it was like something was just odd all the time. I have a video that I made a long time ago called Oddities. And that's just a great red flag right there. If you just, even if you don't know why, if you have this gut feeling like something's up or something's odd, but you can't really figure out what it is in the moment. Like if you're trying to apply logic, sometimes logic can fail because you don't have all the bits and pieces, all the information to make a logical conclusion. They, they withhold that from you. And so, um, but yeah, tip. Uh, tempt from the root tempt to stretch so things still seem acceptable many times because the truth is still present but it's stretched or contorted twisted right it's like anything anything to get us entangled and that's what brought me to the concept of a web to get caught up in a, a web so that's what we're going to talk about next um, you know, if you think about spider webs, I actually walked through one of them earlier today. My dog, excuse me, is going through something. Hang on, y'all. <coughs> Pardon me. She, um, she's had a couple of spells lately where she didn't feel good. I don't know if she got into something and ate something bad or what, but, um, I've been kind of giving her some extra attention and really watching her clothes and stuff. She's, she's getting old. <laughs> um, so... <coughs> Shoo, hang on. But, um, yeah. So that's why I haven't posted a video in a while. It's because I've been, I've actually had other plans that have, um, just <clears throat> fallen to the wayside because I'm, um, having to focus on other things. My, my dog and, and, um, scheduling with my daughter and things like that. So, um, anyway, I've missed you guys. Um, but spider webs, I walked through one today when I was taking my dog outside. They're transparent. You don't see them, right? <clears throat> That's how these webs are. Again, you don't catch it. You don't. You don't see them. Um, so let's let's take a look. This was super interesting to me. I hope you enjoy this. What I'm about to share. Let's take a look at what a spider does. Okay. Again, I know that the typical um, thing to study with regards to symbolism of evil is. Um, you know, serpents or snakes or any kind of reptilian type creature or whatever. But let's take a look at spiders. What does a spider do? Right? Well, they eat their prey, first of all. Um, but we're going to look at how. How they eat their prey. Um, and <laughs> I was reminded, too, of that children's book, Where the Wild Things Are. You know, where there's a part of it where the monsters are telling Max, you know, we'll eat you up. We love you so. And if you look at the start of the book, you know, before he has this dream, this wild dream that is presented like reality, actually, in the book, his mother's having a conversation with him about dinner. And um, she sends him off to, to bed because he's misbehaving. And so um, 
he's um, he's thinking about being hungry. <laughs> and so all these elements of what happened just before he fell asleep are a part of his dream. So, um, so it, really that book is, is an opportunity to teach kids how these seeds can be planted in our subconscious mind and we get clues to that you know what they are in our dreams you know it's a great opportunity for that because we see it played out in the story this children's book but um okay so again back to spiders what does the spider do they eat their prey but how do they eat their prey we know that wolves and sheep's clothing unfortunately this malicious spirit within some people we know that they are predatory they're predatory so um, very similar to spiders in that manner. They here's what this is from Google, like a quick search. Google AI. It's just got to be right, right? <laughs> so they capture number one spiders. They paralyze. They wrap. They digest, and they suck. Now <laughs> we're gonna read the details because it's it's hopefully you can kind of relate this to. Well, not hopefully, you can relate this to your experience you've been through with a wolf in sheep's clothing, but you, you may be able to, and as such, um, I hope that it brings you insight, you know, um, revelations, because all this it plays a part in our healing, um, and in constructing our armor going forward to protect ourselves, right? So the capture, number one, um, it's said that they use a variety of methods to catch their prey. Um, including webs. So if you think about webs and how that catches prey, let me share this with you because I know this is a real life example. Um, um, sometimes a very exploitative, manipulative person with bad intentions, a wolf in sheep's clothing, can have um, resources and they can exploit those resources to entangle other people. So they may be like, you know, hey, you know, let me befriend you because you're thinking, oh, yeah, okay, this is great. Um, and and um, here, like, for example, you can have, you know, maybe they have a lot of land, just as an example. And they're like, hey, I'll give you an acre if, if you, you know, um, get involved in this business with me or whatever. So now you're entangled in this huge web. It seems great in the beginning and then maybe over time you learn this person doesn't have the best character and you're not really on the same page with your morals and values or whatever, but, but you're kind of stuck because you live, you know, right next to them, your neighbors, and, um, and maybe they were very generous with, with selling you something, property, and um, maybe you started a business with them, or it could even just be getting married to somebody. I mean, that's a big deal. It's, you know, you take that serious, your, you know, your oaths or whatever. So getting entangled, getting entangled, okay? A web, um, this can be an organization that you've committed yourself to as well, um, even family. Um, so, yes. And so they, they use their webs to capture their prey. They use their venom, which is essentially poison, right? Um, what does poison do? Poison disorients you. I'm sure it hurts too, but um, it's, it's when we're looking at the psychological and spiritual symbolism here, it definitely, I can imagine would be, it's a toxin. Poison is a top venom is a toxin. It's going to disorient you. Not only with, man, that really hurts. You know, if you have pain, pain's in the forefront of your mind. It clouds your vision. Like you can't pay attention to nothing else but your pain. It's going to take priority, you know? So there's that aspect. But also, it can actually disorient you and blur your vision and, you know, mess your, your normal senses up. Okay, um, the other way they catch their prey, webs, venom, and speed. Well, we know these people are fast talkers. And not only are they fast talkers, because you're trying to comprehend, um, they're going to apply the same concept of being fast to you as far as pressuring you, expecting you to agree to things fast too. So there's this, this concept of speed that's involved, okay, with spiders and wolves in sheep's clothing. All right, number two, after they capture, they paralyze, they paralyze with their venom. And I would say venom here could represent all the tactics that a person can use to paralyze you um, psychologically, okay? 
this is psychological abuse here. So, um, in reality, what happens with a spider spray, um, when they use their venom, they inject their venom, again, it paralyzes the prey by preventing nerve muscle impulses from transmitting. This is one of the um, trauma responses. You know, you got fight or flight, but you also have freeze, which is being paralyzed. It can not only be fear, it can be fear, but it can be um, confusion as well. You know, so you can be stuck in that manner. So you can literally be frozen or paralyzed in that manner. It's like you turn to stone um, and you're just, and you've never been this way in your life and you don't know why you're this way suddenly because it's not, you're not connecting the dots yet. So you blame yourself and all this stuff. It's just a awful snowball effect experience. But see, the reason why you are stunned intentionally, I think, from someone with malicious intentions is because again truth is truth at all levels okay so in the material world the prey of a spider now um, the venom has prevented their nerve muscle impulses from transmitting so what happens in the spiritual and psychological realm your mind and your heart is now your natural impulses are are prevented in other words when your mind would normally say, huh, I, I need to get out of here, or I better, you know, run, that's going to be cut off. You're going to be cut off from that. It's, you're not, it's not going to work. <laughs> your instincts, um, the messages from your instincts to your conscious awareness, that's prevented. That's halted, intercepted. All right, number three, they wrap spiders. They wrap their prey in silk to immobilize it. Again, you're frozen, right? Um, and let me just say this. Sometimes you are wrapped in this cloak of a fantasy world. Um, I don't know what kind of appropriate academic label you would use here, like psychopath or whatever it is. I could be totally wrong, but ju I just go with a biblical term, which is our label, wolves in sheep's clothing. But sometimes they can wrap you in this um, show, <laughs> this act, this circus, this um, fantasy that you think that they are actually a loving spouse or friend or parent or whatever, coworker. Because maybe they're they're giving you gifts, maybe they're wrapping you in compliments. You know, they're checking boxes in this manner. But at the core, it just feels like a rotten relationship, but you're not able yet to pinpoint why. So this wrapping, this outer shell can be deceiving and it can immobilize you because you're stuck trying to figure it out. You don't feel like you have a reason enough to leave this place yet, if it's a job or marriage or whatever. You know, you, you don't feel like, again, most of us who have integrity, when we make a decision, we're, we're, we take the time, a big decision, we take the time that we should to feel good about it because that's part of our value system and when we commit, we commit. And so um, you're kind of stuck in this place of not knowing what to do. You're immobilized, okay? So, the number four, they digest. They digest. And it said, um, this means they vomit digestive fluid onto their prey, which breaks down the tissues. I would say, to make a parallel here, um, they are spewing, speaking. Remember, there's power in the tongue, right? Um, and the, the spoken word, for sure. But they are... Um, they are sharing, <laughs> covering you, okay, with not their digestive fluid, I hope, but their narrative, this fantasy world, right? Which breaks down, not your tissues, but your defenses. How can you rebuttal something when, when you're wrapped in what seems to be this picture-perfect situation? How can you rebuttal that? You're confused. You're, you feel frozen. You're not who you used to be. You feel like you're going downhill in every way. Your health and, you know, physical health, mental health, everything. But, yeah, it's, see, 
again, it's, I, I feel like I can look at myself 20 years ago and if somebody had tried to explain this to me, I would just, it just wouldn't have made any sense. I wouldn't have had the means to understand. So I think this is, you know, for those of us who have been through it, unfortunately, but I hope this is still giving you some insights and, and validation. So, um, what's interesting is I looked at, um, what tissues in the body do because I, at this step number four, um, it says that spiders digest things externally. So that's why they spew out or vomit their digestive fluid onto their prey, um, which breaks down the tissues of their prey, okay? So tissues, what do tissues do? What's being broken down here? Tissues bind together, right? All within your body, literally. This is like the actions that tissues take or what they do. They bind together. They support and protect your organs, which is your critical operating system. Um, they provide structure. They move nutrients around as needed. They repair other damaged tissue. They carry messages to and from various parts of the body. So they're pretty critical. But think about those actions of what tissues do. What's being broken down? The predator, what are they breaking down? They're breaking down the system you have in place, established, right? To connect dots, to um, validate yourself and support yourself and even the other support you might have from friends, you know, and connections. They may want to, you know, um, cut that off. Um, anything that would protect you, they're going to break down your defenses. If I could sum it up, I would say that. They're breaking down, not your tissues, but your defenses, which kind of do all these things right here. Okay, your self-sustaining um, um, instincts. So, um, yes, yes. I just, again, I encourage you to use the mental and spiritual lens as we look at all this stuff, because again, truth is truth at all levels. So, um, all these functions are broken down. Number five, what do they do? They suck. They're vampires. They're vampires. Spiders. So, it says they use their jaws to chew the prey, um, and then they suck up the resulting liquid. And the first thing that came to mind was the witch in the Wizard of Oz that says, I'm melting, I'm melting. She's dissolving. So interesting there. Um, something just to run with if you want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't know. I haven't done it, <laughs> but it just came to me. So um, I'm sorry. This is the next step is the last one. Repeat, repeat. So um, they have to repeat the process until they have digested all but the hard parts of their prey. So it's cyclical. They, they just keep doing this over and over and over, right? Or cyclical. Um, so what are the hard parts that are left alone, right? They, they, they make it through. They don't, they don't, they're not affected. They're not broken down. So that's, that's a literal parts of a spider's prey but let's just look at this symbolically right as an analogy what could the hard parts be that are left over left alone it's whatever can't be liquefied right um i would say um with regards to your mind and your heart it means that in order to prevent um your critical parts from being dissolved and preyed upon um, you have to stay psychologically tough and emotionally tough, right? Um, so that you will not be malleable and you'll be manipulation proof. So we're going to look at some um, bullet points, streamlined actually, um, points with regards to um, having armor, the hard parts, the shell, the shield, okay? So this is simplified. Um, I would say you know, essentially what we want to do is not betray ourselves or our maker by denying our own instincts. We want to get out of the situation and all further situations much, much quicker. You know, once we identify what's going on, we want to get out of it quick um, with our instincts intact before they get broken down. Because repairing that is a long process. Unfortunately, some of us know firsthand. Um, from years and years and years of gaslighting and all kind of stuff. Okay, 
So I was looking at the word instinct. We want to preserve our instincts um, going forward for sure. It's from the Latin nature, <laughs> N-A-T-U-R, or nat nature, meaning the natural order of things. See, God gave us instincts for a reason. We want to preserve that. Um, and if you think about the natural order of things, um, think about how, again, it's Halloween coming up. Think about scary movies, horror movies. Um, what makes things scary? in this example, in these horror movies. It's when something is unnatural. It's unnatural. If it's natural, then we'd all be used to it. It would be common. It would just be normalized and we wouldn't react. We would just be like, oh, okay, whatever. So there has to, um, if, you're, if your intention as a you know movie creator is to scare people, then you have to have the shock factor, which means things have to be unnatural, unnatural. Um, and so, yes. That's what makes things scary, okay? Um, so there's a, a verse, a Bible verse that came to mind, and it's talking about, and I'll share it here in a little bit, it's talking about being able to stand. If we can just be able, after everything, to stand. I was like, okay, I'm going to run with this. It came to me for a reason. So stand um, is from the Latin statuary, um, like a statue, which means to set up right, okay? It also means to tolerate, but I want to um, detail this out so that we don't just walk away thinking that we're supposed to put up with poor treatment and tolerate in that manner, okay? So this is what this, this word, this Latin word, statuary, also means, okay? To cause to stand. And this, uh, these may be points to journal on. Okay, um, actions you can take when you find yourself in a situation where you, you think that you're in a web. Okay, so these are kind of like, um, um, just like battle plans, you know, like if, if you're in the, the midst of a spiritual war, okay, battle. So statuary, you want to, to stand, okay, to cause to stand, to bring to a stop, to fix in the ground, to decide, to settle matters, um, to establish, and it said a practice, a precedent, a principle, a state of affairs, okay, kind of like drawing your, your line somewhere, um, to decree, to support, to appoint a time and place, to determine a price, a payment, a penalty, a punishment. To draw up or to arrange, such as in a battle line. Okay, this is this is my space. This is yours. You know. Um, to uh, to judge, to deem, to set a limit to. So um, yes, this is all related to being able to stand or to choosing to stand. Okay, so this is from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. It says, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day comes you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that it got the wheels turning, most of all. <laughs> I hope it was validating, encouraging, inspiring, uplifting, um, insightful, and I just hope you got something from it. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you feel called to share them below in the comments. I thank you so much for coming along to hear the message. I hope that you have a beautiful day, and I'll see you again very soon.